What's up everyone, welcome back to another video here. I'm in Canada today, so I just come back here a few days ago. So gonna be good to do videos from here during the holidays. Today I wanna to talk about how to manage your trade. Recently I've been doing some more research in this to be able to improve my own execution, my own trade management. And I wanna share with you my rules and things you can also use yourself to make your trading better. So let's just go into it. All right, so today I'll show you some examples of how that works, some clear rules. So my rules are all written here. If you want to download this PDF here in the PDF format, I'll give you access to it. Just check out the link below. You can get this for yourself, print it out if you want, have it on your desk, and you can use it to improve your trading and your rules for trade management. So this is something I've been doing a lot of research about recently to be able to get better at managing my trades and getting in and out of the trades at the right level. So I'll share with you how that works. Of course, with some examples of how that works in the charts. So basically when you manage your trades, you've got two things to think about. Are you trading a sideways market? or a trending market. So if you're trading in the range, it's sideways market. If you're trading in the trend, it's a trending market. Basically, it's simple, right? So how this works is that if you are sideways, your rules change. And basically what you wanna look at is you wanna look at entering at an extreme of the range, so the support or resistance areas, which are the top and low of the range. And you wanna be able to get out before the other side of the range, basically. That's the obvious thing. Okay, so here we have our take profit rule. We wanna be able to take profit before the end of the zone in that range. So before the other side of the zone in that range. Okay, very simple, but we'll go into charts and show you how that works. In terms of placing your stop loss, we wanna put a stop loss beyond the range where we enter. So if you sell at the resistance area, our stop loss will be beyond that zone, just to be safe. Of course, you can place your stop loss right at the top of your candlestick, for example, but that's gonna be less reliable, and I'll show you why that is. Trade management, it's not recommended that you move your stop loss when you trade that kind of sideways market. Why? Well, because if you move your stop loss in the range, price could pull back and hit your stop loss very easily. It could go up near the middle of the range, you could do some sideways action a little bit, and it's not really reliable to move your stop loss in that situation. What you do want to do in that case though, and I'll add it to the document here right after, you're able to get out on opposite signals in that range. Let's go right there first, because I want to show you the sideways market first, then we'll go to training markets after. Let me pull up here my training view, best platform ever. So we'll take an example, a random example here. Let's do one that I traded recently, LDGPY. Okay, so here we have an example of a very simple price action pattern we can trade in this market. This is ranging. Uh, we figured this out on a daily chart. That's a time frame I like to use for looking at my zones, my trading markets, if it's sideways or not. So you can also use a weekly chart if you want. If you are a day trader, you trade like the five minute chart, 15 minute chart, go for like a one hour, four hour chart for that kind of principle. So we'll just go on the daily chart and we'll see clearly the price was here in the range, went back up beyond that range over here and it made another range, came back down, down again, down again, and now it's back in the same range it was before. So we still use that same range here as before for our sideways action. Now we're clearly sideways in that kind of situation, okay, because we're making the same highs as we did before. Cool, so now what we look at is we want to see price getting to the top of that range and giving us a nice signal. Now your signal could be anything you want. Mine is a Bollinger Band reversal. So I'm looking at the break of the Bollinger Band on this four hour chart and ending off a candle that breaks outside the range and coming back within the range after. Because that, that's my setup over here. Now let's get back to our rules. Rule number one is we want to be able to put our stop loss beyond the range. Okay, so the range closes here or so approximately. That can depend on how you draw them and stuff, but that's still okay. So my stop loss is here, by default, beyond the candlestick. It's still fine, it's outside the range. Now if we were to, let's say, enter here, all right, we enter on this candlestick over here, for example. We wanna put our stop loss beyond the range here, just to be safe, because price could go back up, could pull back, and we don't wanna have to get out of the trade if price is just like trying to test the level again. So again, you can have different rules. I prefer it this way, it's less aggressive, it's more conservative, but some people like aggressive better. Just use whatever you prefer, that's okay here. I don't really care about this. You pick what you like. And those are my rules, again, you can use them or not, doesn't matter. Okay, so now when it comes to our take profit here, how do we do it? Well, we gotta go back on our daily chart and we gotta place it near the low of the range. Now in that case, you see the low of the range is over here. Okay, but we touched here one time, but we touched here this level one time. The other times, we were a lot further from this area, right? We came back here before reversing again, from here to here, then reverse back here. We came back again here before reversing back to the top. So to me, that's that's the low, sure, but that's like the 
normal level where price tends to go back before reversing. So I want to be able to get out of any trade I take before that level for sure. So here I put my take profit here because simply, well, I want to have some buffer here. I don't want to put my take profit right at the lowest point. I want to have some room for error. There's some room for price to maybe go down and not go completely there and, and come back up after. Okay, so that's the principle here. So in that case, it gives us a very, very nice 2.31 to 1 or 2.30 to 1, which is good. That's perfect. A good reward to risk here. And that's how the trade unfolds. Now, remember when I said how to manage a trade here, you don't move your stop loss to break even, for sure. But we can still have a exit on opposite singles. What that would mean is you can monitor different time frames. Let's say, for example, here. Okay, let's say we're trading this. We sell over here, like we said. Price goes back down, makes us a engulfing candle like this within the range, and it goes beyond. Why well, we could decide to exit here? Okay, because we have this nice setup. In that case, this one was okay, not the same, not super reliable. But let's say we didn't exit here, and price goes back down more. Now, second confluence, we have a second setup, another engulfing candle with the bong Japan, another bong Japan reversal setup here. Now here I would like to get out, for sure. Okay, so we have one, two, we wanna, get, we wanna be out of the trade. And right there, price reverses back to uh, the high over here. So you wanna be careful about this. You can exit on opposite signals. If you have a signal that works well with price action, you can do that. Exit when the setup appears against you in that range. That works really well. That's a really good thing to do, and it, it works super well. So that's how we deal with sideways market. Now let's see how we deal with trending markets. And by the way, if you have any questions, make sure you comment below with those. I want to hear your thoughts, as always. I want to answer your questions below, of course. And I might do other videos about this topic. If you like this content and you like this kind of topic, make sure to let me know as well. I'll do more videos about it and teach you more stuff that can help you become a better trader. All right, so let's get back to our trading market here. So how do we trade trends? Well, or take profit, we have to take profits. Okay, so we have one over here that's going to be at the closest trend high or low. Okay, so basically we wanna have, I'll show you in the chart, it's gonna be more easy, but we wanna be taking part of the profit at the highest point or the lowest point on the chart. And then we have a second take profit that's at our fixed reward to risk. That works well, I used to do this for a long time, fixed reward to risk, they work really well for trends, cause price trends, and then depending on what you tested in the past to be the best reward to risk to aim for, that can give you a really good reward to risk. Now our stuff loss will be beyond the new pullback or we can have also the earlier pullback, depending on if you are conservative or aggressive. If you are aggressive, take the new pullback, so the most recent pullback. If you are more conservative, go with the pullback just before that. In terms of trade management, that's when we're gonna move our stop loss in our favor. Okay, so we'll put more stop loss beyond the highs or beyond the lows when price makes new lows or new highs. In that case, I'll show you how that works again on the chart very soon. Okay, so a pair that's been trading for a while here is GBPUSD. Uh, the pound US dollar. So this has been trending for some time and what we'll do here is we'll go again on the daily chart to figure out always trending. So we've been going down here for a while and making always new lows, highs, new lows, highs, new lows and so on and that's very good. So in that case what we do is we got to figure out that price is in trend and we can basically see this from here, this place over here. I price making a high, make another lower high, lower high, lower high. Pretty much. So we can see this is trending right right here. Now what we want to do here to enter this kind of market is we'll just mark where we have a pullback to see better. Okay, so here and here. Cool. So now what we can do is we can basically look for pullbacks within the trend to enter on this market. We'll go on lower time frames. And here we might not enter with any kind of bong chuban or stuff. I just like to enter trends on engulfing candles. That usually works for me quite well. And you can use, of course, whichever setup you prefer for entering on these trading markets. Okay, so here what we'll look at is over here we had two pullbacks that I've identified just for us to see this better on this lower time frame to be sure we're in the right place. And we'll stick to our forward chart, that's okay too. Our right, surprise so goes back here. This is our pullback before that. This is our current pullback. Now we want to enter on engulfing candles, for example. Okay, just to keep it very simple here. So what I'm going to be doing here in that case is I'm going to draw this over here. We're going to go short. I can enter here at the close of this engulfing candle. Now, way number one of placing a stop loss is at the current pullback. So over here, the current high. Put a stop loss beyond that. Gives us a very tight stop loss, but a very good reward to risk. Or we can go and place a stop loss beyond this high over here to be safe. 
which would be somewhere over here. Okay, gives us a not so good reward to risk based on our, what we'll set, but it's still pretty good for a trend. That still works out fine. This is a very safe approach. If price were to reverse and stop being trending, you'll be getting out of the trade. But in most cases, price will have a lot of room to go down. Also, in theory, if this is here a right pullback zone or like the proper pullback, price should not go beyond that. So you have two ways that are still valid for placing your stop loss. You just pick the one you prefer in that case. So let's say we go with this one just for the example here. We want to have two take profits. One at the lowest point on the chart here because we are selling so the lowest point we had before. Over here, this place is the lowest point on the chart. And we want to have a second take profit at three to one. That's what I've tested myself to be the best, to work well in trends. Again, you could use different ways to do it. It doesn't matter. Uh, three to one for me works best, but you got to test this out yourself. Okay, so here we have our three to one with set for this, this stop loss here. Of course, if you have a stop loss that's closer here, we'll have a much lower take profit. That's really good, but both ways work. So now we just go here and the way the trends work is we want you all to move a stop loss to a newer level. Every time price makes, in that case, a new low, we'll move it to the high before that. So how that works is, let's see the highs and lows price makes in that case. So we have our high here while we enter the market. Then we have our low, let's say here, before price pulls back. Then we have our high here, then price goes down more. Then we have our low, let's just make it here to be safe because otherwise it's really tight. Then we have our high around here. Then price goes down but makes a sort of sideways market. So that's okay. But the thing is we'll do this on a daily chart because we're trading from a trend on a daily chart. We don't want to have to micromanage our trade. We want to be on a bigger time frame to do this. Let's just go back here and see how that works out. So we enter the market here. Price goes down straight, makes a low over here. That pulls back, makes a high over here. In that case, I could move my stop loss because we have this high. I could move my stop loss to over here, the high where we entered in the market before. Okay, one price, let's say, as an example, and this is not done yet, but as an example, one price goes down here and makes a new low here and then starts to pull back. Then we can move a stop loss to over here. One price makes a high and then starts to pull back down. We'll leave it go. We'll wait for price to hit a low and then we can move a stop loss to here and so on. So we do this like this every time and soon enough we'll be able to reach our 3 to 1, which is good. We get out of the trade there, right there. And then we'll be good to go. By the way, if you look at a smaller stop loss, 3 to 1 will be a lot more closer to your charts. So uh, sure it's more aggressive. It's more likely to be stopped out, but it's also a lot more easy to achieve your target in that case. So you pick the way you prefer. Like these are things you can do. I'm not saying things you have to do for sure, but these are things that you can do to have a better edge, manage your trades better, and get better profits overall in your trades. Again, I've researched this for a while. You can get a PDF copy of these rules here. Make sure you click the link below to download this for yourself. You'll be able to see all these rules. Comment below with your questions always. I want to hear your thoughts and your questions in the comment section below. And before we finish off, I recently came from Bangkok to Montreal here during COVID. So I had this 24 hour journey to come back here to Canada. It took a while, but it was kind of fun with COVID and everything around uh, still. So if you want to see that, then just stay around and you'll see this right here. So welcome back to Bangkok. Today is my last day in this city, in Bangkok, Thailand. So I'm going to take a flight. I'm actually going back to Canada. So welcome to this really messy apartment here where I pack my things and stuff. Going to the airport at 10 p.m. tonight. And let's travel back to Canada. It's the first time after COVID. It's been two years I didn't go back to Canada at all. So we'll see how that goes. And I'll bring you with me, of course. Let's go. It feels so weird walking here in the airport. Everything is like so new to me again. It's like traveling for the first time once again. I didn't leave Thailand for the past two years now. Uh, roughly two years, like a little bit less than that, but still, you understand the point. And my girlfriend is here to bring me to the airport. Make sure I take the right flight, <laughs> I guess. So let's get to the chicken and see how this goes with all the COVID measures now. Bye-bye. Well, guys, the airport world is so new to me. I'm with my girlfriend at the airport now. I'm about to check in for my flight to Canada. It's been a while, like two years I didn't travel, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. Let's do the chicken and get toward the lounge. Okay. 
pretty long line here, it's second. It's uh So I check his documents of course and everything, so it takes more time. Alright, so past security now and the airport is quite empty because as you can see it's, as you can see it's in renovation pretty much everywhere around me except this statue here. So yeah, nothing. Like it's very very quiet. A couple of people are checking for sure. It was really, really busy there, but here inside it's quite good. So I'm gonna head to the lounge and then board my flight. Alright, so I landed here in Doha in Qatar. Long time I've been here for sure. So it's not that many people. Have a look around. Not too bad, but quite a bit of people anyway. The flight was pretty good, pretty good overall. So it's six, seven hour flight. So now let me find a lounge and let me look at my chart for the trades overnight. Hope you like the video today. Make sure you comment below what you toss as always in the comment section. Give a like if you like the video today. Subscribe if it's not done yet. And I'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon.